from the words of a wise man. Because of me, I let you live. Because of you, I've changed my life. I had just gotten home. I'm sitting in my car and I receive a call from my younger cousin saying, damn cousin, guess what happened to me? I was at grandma's house and dog, shit hit the fan between me and Auntie T. Got into an argument because her husband, Junior, got caught up with some females in the house when she was supposed to be at work. She thought I was there to keep a lookout so we wouldn't have crackheads running in and out the house. What happened? I said. Well, he said, she cussed me out. And wound up taking me back home to San Pedro. And our whole ride home, Junior was talking crazy to me because he got caught. I couldn't believe Auntie was choosing him over me. Man, what is family for, he said. I'm just calling you because Junior was talking smack about you too. And he said, next time you get caught up in family business, he was gonna kill you. I said, what? What did you say? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Really, I replied. I was sitting in my Cadillac, that big body thing, chromed out. I was hot. And I'm listening to the radio bumping in my driveway. I couldn't believe what was going on. I just got out of school on this 1.30 in the morning. And it's Friday night, and the west side is popping. From Hollywood to Marina Del Rey, cruising the strip late night, after hour clubs, with sexy car hops on Crenshaw Boulevard all night long until Sunday night to the wee wee hours of the morning. Man, I was trying to get in the traffic. My cousin really doesn't call me unless there was a real emergency to address. Are you kidding me, I said. I was in disbelief, I told him. I kind of heard that before, but no one would say where the situation was coming from or who had said it. I answered, are you sure? He said, yeah, no. He was talking big shit, he replied. As I was talking, something told me to look up because it was late in the evening and I was sitting in my car with the engine running. I was kind of slipping. So as I looked up and I looked into my rear view mirror, I see a familiar figure just walking by, behind my car. Calmly just passing, without a care in the world, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was June. He was on a mission to buy some crack from the corner late night crack spot with a t-shirt on and some shorts, some beat up tennis shoes with no shoelaces in them. The beams was on. And I'm not sure if he saw me, but I sure saw him. I said, bro, bro, hold on. Here this fool is walking past right now. Let me call you back, cuz. I jumped out of my car. Yo, what's up? What's up, Junior? Do you need to holler at me about something I said? Who, me? He said, yeah, I heard you said she was gonna kill me. Oh, no, he replied. My back paddling under the influence of that fight or fight response. I'm quite sure you know what he did, right? Run, Forge, run. Well, for the next few days, I thought about the anger I had because of all the things I had done for Junior, all the mistrust he had shown. He had no loyalty to the game. He had got a house because of me, a car, and all the things he needed to live as a man. But not only that, shh, I was the one he had introduced him to my aunt. And they wound up getting married a few years later after he came home from the second time in the pen. So I knew that he knew better. I just couldn't understand where his mind was at, let alone analyze the regret I felt at the disbelief of how our friendship had changed. I was working, I was going to school, and finally building my own life, my own relationship, and trying to settle down with someone that was mature enough to share their life with someone like me. Man, as the next few days went go by, the more I wanted to resolve the situation between Junior and I. I waited for him to come outside. 
but he stayed in the house for weeks. I even paid someone to give him a clear message that he had made a big mistake by running his mouth, just so he could feel guilty of his betrayal and his loyalty to someone who had his back. But now, nah, he avoided me. One early morning, a friend and I were just sitting in front of my yard at my house, smoking on the blunt like it was the thing to do. Just joking and laughing about the things going on in our neighborhood, you know. A friend and I were making plans to go wash our cars so we can go out and low ride later on that night. So as we're talking, guess who I see walking across the street towards the liquor store with the young homie? Wow, it's Junior. Now it's time to talk. Now it's time to resolve those feelings that I had having. Yeah, this miscommunication we gotta deal with. I need all that funny shit revealed, crack or no crack. I don't take kind of disrespect, because I am what I am. So I walked into that stove. That feeling of anger was back, and Junior act like nothing was wrong. Do we have a problem? I said to him, nah, man. I'm straight, he replied. What? The little homie said, man, you was just talking shit just a few minutes ago. Really, I said? The homie brought their stuff. Junior walked past me. As if the little homie and I started walking out the store together, he said, man, y'all need to knuckle up and get this shit over with. I was shocked as they started walking towards my house. Junior was like, yeah, man. How you thinking that you big shit? Oh, so now he's got some balls, I thought. As we got to the house, Junior put down his beer and his cigarettes. I prepared myself for the throwdown of the century because I knew it. It was really going to be two against one. 10 seconds, 20 seconds. This fight has cost me 16 years of my life on a level three maximum security prison which turned out to be fight capital of Southern California's correctional facilities. Man, I've seen three-on-one fights almost every day. Stabbings, been through a few riots, seen drug overdoses. You know, these fools having more money, more drag attitude, with more dirty tests, adding additional time to release that if you get caught. Do I see the reality of my anger? Do I see the new rules of the ties of my life behind these walls? How many friends do I have now? How much trust do I have in any friends that I make? It's just me, standing in this child line with a plastic spoon in the state cup, watching how miserable the life of an inmate can be that has to make positive choices to program to something that's not promised to you for a release day. Just listen to someone tell you, get in, get in. Get on the ground and prone out, don't move. Due to a safety alarm blurring out as the police run to someone to save someone's life to make, make to take them down or take them to the hole for fighting or being a badass. Now as I reflect on my anger, was it me? Was I tripping? Or just been out of shape because something that was so trivial? And now my need to just get some mail corrects my attitude. The thoughts of being one day closer to being free at home just lets me believe and understand that I guide my destiny in my life. I make my future, not my past, which builds my road to success that will lead these shackles off my feet. Now my fight or flight instincts have kicked in. Where can I run and hide from that anger that was inside of me months before? That anger that once had made me feel beyond the limits of these walls. My mental state is secure, but my physical body is the one that's under arrest. Every night as I pray to the Lord for my forgiveness of my sins, I remember to say that he is the Lord, my savior, the keeper of my faith, the passage to my grace, and the understanding for everything that I encompass within my life. I give all praise to the Lord for change, wisdom, and spiritual guidance. Because I know I never meant to hurt anyone. I just made really bad choice. 
I was influenced by negative people and my anger was out of control. Was my mind unbalanced? With any real consciousness, just taking time to think and use real reasoning. I should not have cared about what people said about me. I love myself. I love my life. And I want to expand and build my future and never let anyone, I mean anyone other than me, to be influenced on my decision-making process that controls my life. Because I know I'll be home one day soon.